I'm Rantasmo, and buckle up, folks, because we're going to talk about the Baldur's Gate thing. So for those who haven't already heard about this, the developer Beamdog recently released an expansion for Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition that adds a bunch of new story content. The expansion briefly includes a character named Mizena, who when you select certain dialogue options while talking to her, will reveal that she is transgender. And a number of people had some things to say about that. To be clear here, there are perfectly valid criticisms to be made about Siege of Dragonspear, including the writing and Mizena in particular. I don't want to talk about any of those. I want to talk about a really effing terrible criticism that I've seen directed at this game as well as many other forms of media, but let's be honest, mostly video games. The criticism I'm talking about is always some variation on the following phrase. I don't have a problem with LGBT people or LGBT characters, I just don't like it when the character is forced. See also shoehorned in, tacked on, ham-fisted, and my personal favorite, that old classic, say it with me now, shoved down our throats. I don't disagree that LGBT characters are sometimes handled in a sloppy or heavy-handed way, but I often find that this claim is very similar to the tokenism argument that I talked about in my Bioware episode a while back. It's a form of concern trolling that tries to look like it's arguing for better queer representation or better writing, when really it's kind of just defending the status quo. But I want to take a closer look here and try to understand what people are really saying when they say that an LGBT character feels forced. I see people making this argument just about any time an LGBT character is in a game, but especially when the character plays a relatively minor role. For instance, there's an audio log you can find in Borderlands 2 that reveals, amongst other things, that a test subject and the scientist forced to experiment on him are both in same-gender marriages. His husband has the shivers. He could have transmitted... Hey, remember that wife of yours and how you wanted to see her, like, ever again? And I feel like I saw more complaints about this than I did about Sir Hammerlock, a gay character who plays a much larger role in the story. To illustrate this a little better, let's compare Mizena to a character that I've seen a lot of people use as an example of the right way to incorporate an LGBT character into a game. Let's talk about Arcade Ganon. Arcade Ganon is a companion character in Fallout New Vegas, who can potentially fight alongside you for almost the entire game. He's a member of the Followers of the Apocalypse, a group of radical idealists. But he also has ties to the Enclave, a faction that runs on much more traditional principles. And over the course of the game, he struggles with the dissonance between those two philosophies and how they relate to his own identity. Arcade is gay, but that's pretty incidental to his character. Because he has so much dialogue, and because New Vegas has no full romance options as such, the amount of dialogue related to him being gay is fairly minimal, and in fact it may not come up at all. Overall, Arcade is a very likable, complex, and well-developed character. Mizena, on the other hand, is a merchant, a cleric to be precise, who only receives a few lines of dialogue. We don't find out very much at all about her background or her personality, apart from the fact that she worships Tempest and was assigned male at birth. Apart from that, she doesn't have very much depth. So is Arcade a better character than Mizena? Well, that's kind of a trick question because they're completely different types of characters. E.M. Forster described this difference as round versus flat characters. Round characters grow and change and are fully fleshed out with a whole bucket of tasty character traits. While flat characters stay pretty much the same throughout the whole story, and only have one or two basic traits that define them. It might seem at first glance that round characters are inherently better than flat characters, because hey, more character development equals better, right? Round characters are obviously way more interesting, and Arcade is undeniably a more interesting character. But the thing is, you often need both round and flat characters to tell a compelling story. Round characters drive and resolve conflict, while flat characters support the round characters by offering vital information, acting as important plot devices, providing comic relief, or just serving as texture by showing us the type of people who populate the setting. A story that only contains flat characters isn't going to hold your interest for long, but in a story where every character is round, from the main hero, to the blacksmith who forges her weapon, to the mysterious old man who tells her where to go, to the cleric who heals her wounds, and so on, it would be really difficult to stay focused on any single plot thread. So saying that Arcade Ganon is a better character than Mazena is kind of like saying that Lobster Bisque is better than a bowl. 
Like, you're probably gonna get a lot more enjoyment out of the lobster bisque, but if you don't have any bowls, it's just gonna be kind of messy. I often use Maxi from Skins as my go-to example of the token gay guy. And the reason this character is so egregiously frustrating to me isn't just that the character is bland and doesn't have many traits apart from just being gay, but that he's also a main character who's been given more or less the same narrative weight as the rest of the ensemble. In a show where every other main character is given a chance to be deceitful or mean or lazy or unsure of themselves or otherwise deeply flawed, it's disappointing that Maxi gets just as much screen time but is never really developed beyond just being the nice gay guy. Maxi is a flat character who has been inserted, forced if you will, into a role that seems like it should have been filled by a round character. Ms. Zayna isn't an especially deep character, but she is just as deep as most of the other merchants in the Baldur's Gate series. Because most merchants aren't really supposed to be deep and interesting. They're supposed to sell you junk, and if you're lucky, they might also share one or two pieces of information about themselves or the world that, in all likelihood, won't be all that useful beyond just providing a bit of flavor. In Baldur's Gate 2, for instance, there's an armor merchant named Arnolinus. You can ask him about the armor he sells, and he'll give you a pretty basic description. You can also ask him about his unusual name, and he'll respond by telling you that it's a dwarven name, because he's a dwarf. And that's pretty much it. You can insult him if you want, and he won't sell you armor anymore until you apologize, but he doesn't give you any quests or any details about the world or himself other than the fact that he sells armor and he's a dwarf. If you're not a fan of this style of NPC, that's absolutely a valid criticism, but it's a criticism that applies to the entire RPG genre. These games are absolutely lousy with people who give you one weirdly personal detail of dubious relevance and are never heard from again. I can totally see why many trans gamers would rather see themselves represented by a deeper, more well-rounded character. But that's not the same thing as the character being forced or badly written. And when a reviewer says, I'm fine with LGBT characters so long as they're not forced, it sounds an awful lot like, I'm fine with you being gay so long as you don't flaunt it in my face all the time. I think a lot of reactionaries lionize Arcade Ganon because, in a way, his gayness being so incidental to his character makes it more palatable. It's not in your face. He doesn't flaunt his sexuality, as it were. He doesn't confront you with the minute details of his experience of being gay. And there's really nothing wrong with that, but that still doesn't make him an inherently better character. Being trans is one of the very few things that Mazena does talk about. Her gender identity is clearly very important to her, or at least important enough to be worth mentioning in the short conversation you have with her. But that doesn't mean she's only there to push a pro-trans political agenda, or to show off how inclusive and progressive the developers are. She's not in the game just to be trans, any more than Arnolinus is in Baldur's Gate 2 just to be a dwarf. First and foremost, Mazena is there to heal your ass. And secondarily, she's there to add texture to the game's world. She provides a bit of info on one of the setting's deities, and she shares some personal details that help to illustrate that this is a living, breathing world with individuals with their own unique lives and experiences outside of just, you know, healing your ass. It's just that in this case, those personal details happen to be related to the fact that she is trans. And yes, it would be pretty unusual for a person to just walk up to you and tell you they're trans without any provocation. But that's not what happens. The conversation is actually pretty similar to the one you have with Arnolinus. Mizena tells you about the origin of her name if you ask her about the origin of her name. And she only reveals that she was raised as a boy if you ask why she changed her name in the first place. That's not very unusual at all. No, you can't insult her the way you can Arnolinus, but that's hardly a default option for any of the other merchants either. And as many people have helpfully pointed out, magical gender swapping, ambiguously gendered deities, and other forms of gender nonconformity are considerably more common in the Forgotten Realms. So it's highly likely that this is a world where transphobic ignorance is much less of a problem and where trans people feel more comfortable being open about their identities. And there's nothing wrong with depicting a world like that. Part of the beauty of fantasy is that it allows us to imagine societies that in certain ways are closer to the one we would like to live in someday. 
So if these criticisms are rooted in transphobia, and I think that many but not all of them are, why hasn't there been nearly as much outrage surrounding what few other trans characters have been in games? Well, aside from the fact that Baldur's Gate is a really important game to a lot of people, we also haven't really seen many trans female characters like Mizena in a game before. Compared to, say, Erica from Catherine, whose gender identity is only vaguely hinted at through clever dialogue. Mizena's transness is upfront and unambiguous, and if you spend enough time interacting with her, unavoidable. It can't really be debated or headcanoned or explained away, and I think that scares some people. Mizena's true offense isn't being defined by her gender identity, it's being a trans woman who tells you that she is trans. As it happens, Beamdog has since announced that they'll be fleshing out Mizena's character a bit more, and far be it from me to complain about a developer making a trans character more interesting. I would love to see a fully developed trans party member, and if it came down to a mutually exclusive choice between having either round trans characters or flat trans characters in our media, I'm obviously going to go with round. Just like how in Borderlands 2, if it came down to a choice between Hammerlock and the rando guy on the audio log who mentions his husband, I'm going to choose Hammerlock every time. But why can't we have both? I think it's pretty weak sauce to say that an LGBT character always has to be fully developed or there's no point in even including them. That's a standard that doesn't exist for straight and cisgender people. No one says that the random villager with one line of dialogue where he mentions his wife is only straight so the developers can push a heteronormative political agenda. A cisgender blacksmith doesn't need to justify their cisness by sending you on a side quest to retrieve the girdle of, I don't know, bathroom legislation. If straight and cis people get the freedom to sometimes be flat one-dimensional characters, I want that freedom too. So shove that down your throat.